Lausanne wants to say we actually can use reason to transcend, right, there's that word again, to transcend, transcend the natural realm. That's precisely what Kant denies. Kant says any claim to have knowledge of supersensible realities is false, something like a category mistake. Yes, sir? Uh, in talking about freedom, does Kant talk about freedom as sort of an arbitrary freedom or freedom that's kind of the freedom to do what you ought? It's a freedom to choose whether or not to embrace the moral law of reason. So it, we haven't talked much about autonomy, not as much as I would have liked. But let me put it this way. The alternative to autonomy for Kant is heteronomy. Right? It's not anarchy or anomy or whatever. The, it's, not, it's not having no law. Either you are autonomous and have your own law, which means you freely, as a free rational creature, give the rational law to yourself, place yourself under its obligation and obey it for no other reason than that it is the moral law. Or failing that, you reject that option, you're not capable of it, you become heteronomous. That is, you receive the law of your action from outside of yourself. You're determined by other forces in your experience and in your life that are not your own free, rational choice. You're determined by peer pressure, or by your heritage, or by your programming from your parents, or by whatever your desires happen to be at this point in time. There's a kind of analog here, rationalist analog here, to slavery to sin. If you don't transcend this, you don't overcome this by freely becoming autonomous, then you just become, you know, the you adopt the nomos of whatever is able to impose itself upon you. You can't go without a nomos, right? It's either hetero heteronomy or autonomy. There's no option of being completely independent of any law. Because that means, if you say, well, I just do what I feel like, well, it's your feelings then that are dictating to you what you're going to do. And though those are not governed by reason, that's just, that's just, that's another type of heteronomy. For Kant, also, following tradition is a source of heteronomy. Because I'm letting the tradition, whatever the tradition is, whatever tradition I've been educated in, I allow that to decide for me what my ethical principles and what my, what the maxims of my actions will be. So that, that's what Kant's doing with freedom. I think, to say, Freedom is, in many ways, this kind of final perfection of the rational being placing itself under the law. A rational being who holds back from placing himself under the law, from adopting the law as his own and giving it to himself autonomously, has failed the sort of highest challenge of reason. He hasn't got there yet.